everybody, welcome to number 27 to a special episode about the disaster fleet. Why is it called the disaster fleet? Well, it's called the disaster fleet because only one of my six cars actually works properly. So I'm going to take you through them one by one, not going to spend too much time because there's loads of videos on them if you want to go further in depth, but I'm just going to let you know what's going on and eventually obviously we'll also come to whichever car is still working properly. Right, so let's start off with this first of all, and there's a distinction with this Audi that it was a free car. John, one of my viewers, actually gave it to me. Um, it does in truth need a bit of work, so it's not surprising that it isn't a completely working car. However, it does have an MOT until May the 22nd, but it does have a few faults that we looked over before. Um, so one of the ball joints needs doing, and I'm pretty sure the two dust covers on the universe, on the drive shafts at the front, they also, they, they have a name, I know, but they need changing as well for it to go past the next MOT. It had two other faults that it came with, which in theory should now be fixed. One is a fuel leak at the front, which I sorted out a couple of days ago at Anton's place. And then there was also a binding rear brake, which again, I will check again now, but I'm sure, I'm pretty confident that I had got that sorted out. Now, the whole purpose of this car, since it was free, was that I want to fix it up, get it through the MOT, and then at that point, I simply want to give it, away, well, not give it away, I want to sell it and give away the profits um, to a Ukrainian charity for refugees, Ukrainian refugees. So we then move on to the Lexus. Now, I always wanted one of these because it's such a seminal car. It's the first really successful, proper, luxury Japanese car. And there's just something about these. And when I got Sumo, it had, apparently some water leaks and also the dash wouldn't light up. Um, the chap who sold it to me said, look, it's, I think one, the driver's door has been replaced, so it probably just needs realigning uh, for the leaks, which turned out to be the understatement of the year. By the way, I'm not accusing him, he's a lovely guy, um, but I don't think he realized quite how bad the water leaks were gonna turn out to be. And uh, the other issue that it had was the dash wasn't lighting up. And uh, both of these, I thought, well, that's really easily sorted because the dash, I had a look on eBay, loads of LS400 dashes for, I don't know, probably a hundred pounds or whatever. So if I have to, I can even just replace the whole cluster. And yeah, the, the water ingress will be fine. Realign the door, done. When I got it, realigning the door made zero difference. After a lot of examination, it turned out that in actual fact, the water, there was a little bit of rust in that top corner. The water was coming in through that through the windscreen all the way down through the dash which is also why the cluster is no longer working because that cluster there had water running down the back close to it not on the cluster itself for years and the humidity obviously eventually got to it the big issue i've had with this one is that now the water leaks are sorted i also found a leak from one of the sunroof drains but that dash has proved to be my undoing because I thought there was loads of them on eBay, but in actual fact, the LS400, I think more than almost any other car, even for the same year car, the same facelift or whatever, they're just all different, the clusters, depending also on what options you have. So I haven't been able to find a replacement cluster. I haven't been able to fix it either. So a bit of a pain. When I get that cluster, this will be solved. And I think now we're gonna move on to the other two and we'll go to that lovely little classic there, Fred, which has for a long time been one of my favorite cars. Right, so we move on to maybe the more interesting part of the garage now, because we have here Fred, my Austin Healey, 1969. We have the Bismarck, uh, and we have probably my other favorite cars, the Elise and the Ferrari. But we'll start with Fred. Fred was owned by uh, the mother of a friend of mine from you. It's a car I really love, but it does also have some issues. It's not the one that's working perfectly in inverted commas. What's wrong with Fred? Well, I've done an engine change on it. Uh, like it's, a, it's an engine with, uh, which is bored out. It's got a, it's basically tricked up and it is lovely, but it still needs a bit of fettling on the low end running. The speedo still doesn't work. The tachometer still doesn't work. One of the rear brake lights has stopped working as well and it's not the bulb. So there's still a lot of fettling to do. To be fair though, it can be driven. So I guess it's not one of the worst. That will come when we talk about those two. So we come to the Bismarck and tell you what, this is the only car I have <laughs> against all expectations, which is working pretty much properly. 
I, I, I never learn, do I? Because the moment I say that about one of my cars, something will go wrong. But at the moment, it is working properly. Everything works. You remember the state of this when I first got it, how it was painted, all the rest of it. It's been a really hard journey sorting it out, but I think you'll agree, it does look miles better. It does still need a lot of finessing and fettling. There's some rust under the washer bottle that needs doing, but it's not major rust. And this car just drives really well. Since I adjusted the injection, it is lovely and a pressure to drive. Before that used to cut out everywhere. That is no longer the case. So it's now my daily. And I think, you know, I was left with either the Lexus or this to use as a daily. And this is definitely the one that I'm keeping. I think I do really like these cars. I know they're a bit granddad, but I don't know. It's just more me than the Lexus is. I think we'll leave the Ferrari for last, but let's go and see uh, Frankie the Lotus. Um, this is a Lotus Lease S1, which I bought with chassis damage, and it, it, it was quite a, a sort of a, a, a difficult process to fix the chassis on these. Normally, it's not something that's done too commonly, but aside from that, it's been pretty good. Until recently, I decided to do a suspension refresh, and that meant basically changing the shocks all around, which was brilliant. The next day, I was supposed to take it to Guillaume Motorsport to get it set up. I went to get some petrol, and after about seven miles, it just wouldn't get, it wouldn't go into gear anymore. I managed to hobble back here in third gear, but when I got here, I found essentially the clutch wasn't completely disengaging. It looked initially as it might be hydraulics, so I ended up changing the slave cylinder and the master clutch cylinder, but that hasn't fixed it. And it's now looking like it is a problem with the clutch itself. So at the moment, Frankie, the Frankenlees, is completely immobile. It looks like I'm gonna to have to take the gearbox off, take the rear clam off, possibly engine off. So a lot of big work. And the main problem with that is that in actual fact, I was supposed to start working on the Influenzo. I need to get the engine out of that, but let's move on to that now. Well, this is a car that I originally bought under lockdown and it did have a few issues. I'm not gonna go into massive detail because there are about 35 videos if you're really interested in this car and by chance you haven't seen anything about it, you can go and have a look. It turned out there was a lot more than a few issues and lately it culminated in me having to completely rebuild both heads, including changing one that was cracked. I put it all back together and then realized that there is still lots of oil in the cylinders. So this still has a major issue. Now the question is, where is it coming from? It could be the top end, but the top end of the car of the engine has been rebuilt. So it's more likely to be the bottom end. So it could be that the oil control rings, for example, are sticking and they're no longer working. It could be that the bores are scored because I didn't check this all properly before. But to sum it all up, at the moment, this basically needs the engine taking out all over again. So I have that pleasurable job to look forward to. At the moment, everything else seems to have got in the way and I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case for much longer, really. Next week, I want to get that the Elise sorted out. And after that, I think it's gonna be engine out. I've got um, my friend's crane is coming today, the engine crane. Uh, and yeah, from that point on, I'm gonna start working on the Influenza again. The disaster fleet is quite varied, but I think things will get fixed. That Audi hopefully will get fixed pretty soon and will be ready to go. Fred's okay for the moment, but in any case, I'm thinking of selling him. So we'll see what happens with Fred. The Lexus is definitely gonna go at some point. I just wanna fix the cluster first. This is working fine and I'm kind of okay with it. So that's the situation. If you're interested in any of the cars that I've mentioned and you haven't seen the videos, please do look for them, it's fantastic. If you haven't yet subscribed to me, please do, that really helps. If you wanna follow me, if you want need to send me a message on Instagram, that's the best way to contact me. And if you have a car that you think I should be doing a video on, um, for what, because it's a special car, an interesting car, it has an interesting history, uh, then please again, contact me on Instagram and hopefully we can arrange something. Thank you so much and see you all very soon.